So a little bit of exam logistics, just in case you're concerned, because this is important for next Tuesday. So everybody knows that next Tuesday is the exam, right? Good. So that's why there is no homework due for next Tuesday. Woo, right? So you get to prepare. Um, so it's from 3.30 until 5. Realistically, we'll probably start at 3.40 because it'll be a bit of a matter of you know, getting everybody out, uh, just like here as well. Um, since we may need two rooms, we have Le Conte 1 and Le Conte 3. We will fill Le Conte 1 first. Okay, I guess everybody heard that, right? Okay, so we're going to fill Le Conte 1 first. If we fill Le Conte 1, we will have overflow in Le Conte 3. So, as in here, but go to the other lecture theater first. Okay, this is kind of important. It's probably worth paying attention to, right? Because otherwise you end up in the wrong lecture theater. Um, the other thing is it's open book. So anything printed that you can carry, you can bring. Okay, I know that gives an unfair advantage to those who work out in the gym, but um, I hope nobody will push it to that limit. So um, the reason I said why we cannot uh, allow computers or other things, and I know it's a horrible way of killing trees, right? Because you might have to print out notebooks. It's just that there's no way of drawing an efficient boundary between what you got on your phone or when you open up Facebook Messenger or WeChat or Skype or anything and then ask your friends to, well, how to solve it, right? This is why the only safe way to ensure that is by just disallowing any electronics. Sorry about that. Um, note paper is all provided so you don't need to bring your own exam sheets. As a matter of fact, you're not supposed to add your own paper to the exam, right? Okay, but you can print as much printed stuff. Um, you still need to find it, so there's the how much paper you bring versus knowing where to find it thing, right? So if you have too much paper, it doesn't help you. Good, so this is logistics. Um, what are we gonna cover? Okay, so I'm going to give you an answer that may or may not satisfy you. Namely, everything we covered all the way up to the midterm. So that includes this lecture, this Thursday's lecture, and that's it. Um, so, you know, what questions are we going to pose? Because, I mean, the homeworks were fairly code heavy, right? And obviously, the you can't bring a computer means you can't run code on your piece of paper. So what are we going to ask? Well, we might ask you about concepts. Right, like learning rates, regularization, maybe overfitting, you know, stuff like that, just you know, being able to explain and understand and detect things or covariate shift, right? The second thing is you will need to be able to understand some code. Right? So for instance, you might see some you know network definition or something. Um, we'll require some basic math. So if you know what a convolution looks like or how to take derivatives or how the chain rule works, that's a, probably a really good thing. Um, after all, this is a stats class, right? So we need to have some math questions in there. And the last thing is, well, again, because this is experimental heavy, right? So we might maybe show you some experiments and ask you, well, hey, what did go wrong there? And so, for that, it helps if you did the homework and you ran the experiments and you figured out what worked and what didn't work, right? So that's essentially the gist of what this is going to be about. Um, the answers will typically be fairly simple and straightforward. So you won't have to write war and peace as an answer for every one of those. As a matter of fact, you probably will not have enough time to go through all the problems. This is intentional. So don't freak out about the fact that there are going to be more problems than you can get through. I'm reasonably confident that very, very few will get through all the problems. It's designed that way, such that if you find a problem that you think is utterly horrible, 
you skip it and you move on to the next one. So this is a safeguard mechanism to make life easier for you. Okay. Now, the last thing is obviously in the end we'll look at the distribution of scores when we assign grades, right? And we'll try to make it right for everybody. And I'm being purposefully vague here um, for the very simple reason that every once in a while you hear that at some university a lecturer goes and makes it a little bit more explicit and then the students make the uh, well, secret pack that everybody hands in a blank sheet and then, you know, everybody walks out with an A, right? Um, so that's the reason why I'm just saying we'll make it right. Okay, good. Any questions? Yes? How do you suggest we study for it? Oh, well, you should look at the lectures that we covered so far. And you should have a good understanding of what was covered. So I would, for instance, go through the slides or maybe through the corresponding book chapters. You may find the book chapters easier to read. This way you don't have to listen to me or move, but you can just read it. Um, you can rewatch the videos. You should probably go over the homework solutions and they will give you some hints of, you know, especially for the more experimental parts of how to do things. Or if you did well in the homeworks, then you probably don't need to go through the reference solutions. Um, we will try to make the questions of a flavor that's as related as possible to the homeworks. But since the homework is of a different nature, right, because you actually get to work with that on a computer in a bit more time, they, the questions will not be identical, right? That's just an inevitability. So there's, some, there's your covariate shift. And unfortunately, it's an inevitable one because the format is different. Right. Um, any other questions? Okay. Um, good. So that seems like the explanation was very clear. Uh, yes? How many questions? Um, I think the plan is something in the order of 10 questions, but that doesn't really mean a lot because questions could be short or could be longer. Um, we will give you point estimates for every question such that you get some idea of whether you're stuck at a really trivial question or whether you're stuck at a really difficult one. So this way you can calibrate your time. Um, any other questions? Everything clear? Good. Um, so I said, make sure you go to Le Conte 1 first and you fill that up. And once Le Conte 1 is filled up, we'll spill over in here. Exam time's gonna be probably in the order of 80 minutes. Okay. Good, great. So that's that.